Hi, this is Deepa and welcome to Civilian Civil Tips. So today we are going to see the topic Geometrical Design of Highways. As you all know, highway or a carriageway is one of the modes of a transportation. In geometrical design, the visible features of the highways is designed. For example, width of the road, the slope of the road, the horizontal curve, vertical curve, etc. The main aim is to design the highway with maximum efficiency and safety with minimum cost. So let's see the various elements that we need to design for. The elements can be categorized into five main headings which include cross-section elements, horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, intersections and side distance for the ease of the study. The first category is highway cross-section elements. This includes all the features on the road surface and that is the pavement surface characteristics, cross slope, width of the pavement, median, curb, road margin, width of formation, right of way and land width. The first one is pavement surface characteristics and about friction. During rainy season, we hear a lot of stories about the skidding of a vehicle on the road and this is due to the insufficient frictional resistance. The friction between the carriageway and the tire of the vehicle is very important for the smooth running avoiding the slip and skid. The second surface characteristics is pavement unevenness. Imagine we are traveling on an undulated or a wavy road surface. Even a small up and down movement will cause very uncomfortable. Even if that we travel for a uh, speed of 60 km per hour. Therefore, the, the road must be designed and maintained as even as possible. The third characteristic is the light reflection characters. There are two types of road surfaces. Black colored bituminous pavement surface and gray colored concrete pavement surface. Suppose during a night travel on a black colored bituminous pavement and that too after a heavy rain, do you feel any strain in your eyes because of light? Yes. Headlight beam from the vehicle touches the road surface and it will return as a glare causing the stress in our eyes. It can be avoided if you use a light colored pavement surface. But for a light colored pavement surface, the glare will be there during a sunny day due to the reflection of sun rays from the surface. Since this situation is more critical than the black topped surface, we usually prefer black topped bituminous surface. The fourth one is drainage. Water is the main enemy for the bituminous surface, so we need to get rid of it as soon as possible. For that purpose, drainage facility should be designed properly. The second cross section element of a highway is cable. It is also called as cross slope. If we see the cross section of a road, you can see that it is not constructed horizontally, but there is a slight slope provided to the sides. The slope provided on the surface in the transverse direction is called camber. This is provided to drain the water facility falling on the surface as quickly as possible, thus preventing the entry of water into the pavement layers and all the underlayer pavements will be protected. So in the figure, we can see the two arrow marks showing the camber direction. There are three types of pavements in there. The first one is parabolic camber in a parabolic shape. The second one is a straight line camber. The middle point and the edges are connected by a straight line. These two are not usually used because of some disadvantages. So we use a combination of parabolic and straight camber usually in the practical purpose. I also recommend camber values for various roads. For a cement concrete road in a heavy rainfall condition, we use a camber of 2% and a low rainfall condition we use 1.7%. For a bituminous road, it is 2.5% for heavy rainfall area and 2% for lower rainfall area. For waterbound macadam roads and gravel roads, it is 3 and 2.5%. For earthen roads, it will be higher value of 4% in a heavy rainfall area and 3% in low rainfall area. The third element uh, is the width of the pavement. Now, how do we fix the width of the single lane road? It mainly depends upon the width of a vehicle. The one lane width is equal to width of a vehicle plus some clearance on both the sides. So in a figure we can see that standard width of a vehicle by IRC is 2.44 meters and there is a clearance provided on both sides. So the total of a single lane length will be 3.75 meters. Similarly, IRC also recommends various width values for the roads. If it is a two lane road without raised curves, then that is 7 meters. For a two lane road with raised curves, the width should be 7.5 meters. Intermediate lanes will be constructed with a width of 5.5 meters and for multi lane we use 3.5 meters per lane. Then the next and fourth element is median. The, it is also called as traffic separators. It is provided at the center of the road, dividing the opposite to moving traffic. 
the main objective of providing a median is to divide the traffic in the opposite direction and thus avoiding the head-on collision and thus to avoid the headlight glare. We have seen that some plants are grown in this median area to avoid the headlight glare. Median can be like any uh, substance. It can be as simple as road marking using white or yellow paint or a physical separator like a land width or a mechanical separator like a cone or bar etc. IRC recommend a minimum width of 6 meters avoiding the headlight glare. For a rural highway, minimum of 5 meters is recommended and for an urban highway, 5 meters is desirable. For an express highway, a median of 10 to 15 meters is used for considering the future expansion. The fifth element of highway cross section is curve. Curve is the boundary between the footpath or the median or the shoulders. In the left side figure, the black and white strip shows the curve. Similarly, you can see on the right hand side figure. So these are some more examples for the curve. There are four types of curb available. First one is low curb or mountable curb. As the name suggests, the height will be very less of 100 mm or 10 cm so that vehicles can mount above the curb. In semi-barrier type, the height is 150 mm above the pavement surface. So under only emergency condition, the vehicles are allowed to enter. In barrier curb, as the name suggests, vehicle entry is completely restricted. The height will be as high as 200 mm. In submerged curb, it is provided below the carriageway and it is usually provided to provided for lateral stability of pavements. Then next cross section element is road margins. This includes all the marginal features. Let's see one by one. First one is pavement shoulders. It is provided on both sides of the pavement all along the road surface and it is provides the structural stability. It also acts as an emergency lane which is usually provided at a width of 2.5 meters. So these are example of paved and unpaved shoulders. Second road margin is guardrails. It is provided on edge of the shoulder for preventing the vehicle from running off the embankment. It is seen as colored or black and white. The third road margin is footpath and it is also called as sidewalks. It is a facility provided for the first pedestrians to walk. The fourth one is driveway. It connects the highway with commercial establishments. The fifth one is cycle track where which is used exclusively by cycle travelers. Then the fifth, sixth one is parking lane. It allows the parking of vehicle on the roadside on the, along the curb itself. The seventh one is best bay. It is provided by resisting the curb so that it avoids conflict between the moving traffic and the buses can stop and take the passengers. So this is another example of bus base. You can see on the left side, the width of the road is increased so that the buses can stop and the through traffic can move through the lanes. The eighth one is frontage road. It is a road parallel to the main highway to access the properties from the highway. The next highway cross section element is the width of formation or width of roadway. It is equal to the width of pavement plus the traffic separators or medians plus the shoulders. From the figure it is clear. The last highway cross section element is right of way. Right of way means the area of the land that is acquired for the construction of the pavement. It also includes the future development. The width of this area of land is what is called land width and it will be as high as 60 meters for national highways. I have taken this presentation with reference to the highway engineering text by Khanna and Jesto. Hope you all understand the topic and thank you.